All right, everyone, welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. How's everybody doing today? I hope everyone had an amazing, amazing weekend. Today, we are going to talk about calendar organization. Calendar organization. And why is this important? Well, every CEO works from a calendar. Can we agree on that? CEOs don't wake up and just say, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do today. We'll see what comes. Nope. Every successful person is working from a calendar. And many of you, you already have busy lives, right? You, some of you are already working a full-time job. Some of you may be going to school. Um, you're, you're married, you have children, you have maybe community obligations, things like that. And so in order for you to build a successful network marketing business, you have got to schedule everything that is important to you so that things get done. And so number one, let's talk about the type of calendar. And let me go over here and grab my calendar. Everyone should have their 2022 calendar. Who went out this weekend and got their calendar? Or who has their calendar? Cassandra, you have yours. Lisa, do you have your 2022? Okay. Shamika, do you have your 2022 calendar? I... Ebony got hers? Not yet, okay. ma'am. Not yet, but it's in, the, it's in the making. All right. It'll Nora. be here this week. Nora, Lina, Miss Lina, y'all have your 2022 calendars? Yes, I do. I do. Miss Lina, do you have yours? Oh, yes. Well, I got a 2021 and 22 cook to combine right now. Okay. All right. Tanya Jones, do you have your 2022 calendar? Not yet. All right. Tyrese? Mine is undated, so I can keep using mine until it's, the page is done. Okay, good. Millie and Benita, do y'all have your 2022 calendars? Yes. All right, Benita? Jessica? Benita said not yet. All right, Jessica, who's on the Galaxy Note 20? That's me. Who, who's that on the Galaxy? I can't hear you. Audrey, it's Audrey. Oh, hey, Audrey. Thanks for joining us. Hi. <laughs> Audrey, everyone, uh, Audrey is my future business partner, and I wanted her to join us today so that she could see what it's like to be in the environment, a winning environment with champion mindset. So what better way to expose uh, a prospect to the business than to be on coffee break with us, right? Uh, Lanice. And Gina, do y'all have your 2022 calendars? Yes, I have. I have um, uh, a big one, you know, um, the big at a glance, the desk one, and I have the 15 minute one. I didn't get my the the my everyday planner yet, but I do have the two calendars I like to work from. Okay, all right, sounds good. Sounds good. So the main thing with your calendar is you definitely want to have the month at a glance. So you definitely want to be able to see, you know, and you only need one, one page. A lot of times the planners will have the whole month spread out on two pages so you can look and see what's going on for the month. And then you want to have the times of the day so that you can schedule the three-way calls, the follow-ups. Um, some people are using the 15-minute blocks. Some are using 30-minute blocks and hour blocks. It doesn't matter, it, 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 it's gonna be customized for you. So you wanna make sure, but you wanna make sure you have the times of the day so that you can schedule everything that's important. Now, let's talk about what things you should put on your calendar, all right? So if you're taking notes, this is a good time to take notes. And I'm gonna give you a list of some things that you should be tracking um, on your calendar as well as scheduling on your calendar. So we're going to talk about things to track on your calendar and that might be the stuff that you put on the month at a glance and then there's going to be things that you should schedule on your calendar um, 
And that's going to be the stuff that your DMO, your daily method of operation to run your business. So number one thing to schedule on your calendar, prospects, meaning who will you prospect that day? Who will you be prospecting that day? So in order to really maximize your time, you need to do that work like the night before. Or maybe you do it over the weekend for the whole week. I don't know. That's going to be based on you and your schedule. But the, the, the time that you block to prospect people, when that time comes, let's say you say, okay, Tanisha, um, I'm blocking from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. to prospect. Guess what? You should already have your list of people that you're prospecting. That is not the time to go look for people to prospect. You want to already have those list of people and now you're spending that time, those two hours, picking up the phone, calling people or texting them or inboxing them or whatever. That's the actual prospecting, right? So that means you need to schedule some work time to be able to get that list together, all right? Any questions about that? I want to make sure y'all understand that. Okay, good, good. Number two, three-way calls. Actually scheduled three-way calls. That needs to be on your calendar. And every open spot that you don't have something to do, you need to be filling it with a three-way call. Because if you're not getting your senior business partner on the phone with a prospect, you're not working your business. Right? It's PS3, peak interest, show the plan, three-way call. So if you're not getting those three-way calls scheduled, that means you're not showing a plan. And if you're not showing a plan, then that means you're not prospecting. You're not peaking interest. Now, the question may come up, well, how many three-way calls should I schedule a day? As many as you can. But everybody should have a minimum, a minimum goal that they set for themselves. A minimum goal. If you're brand, brand new, you should set a goal to schedule at least one three-way call a day. Any questions on that or comments? All right, number three, follow-up, meaning who will you follow up that day? That needs to be scheduled as well. And that's going to be the same as the prospects. You should already have a list of who you're going to follow up with for the time that you have blocked to do your follow-ups. And again, I highly recommend setting up a minimum of people that you're going to follow up. But as, if you, as long as you're consistent with the prospecting, you're going to, by default, have the people to follow up with. Does that make sense? As long as you're prospecting a certain, certain amount of people every single day, by default, you're going to have people to follow up with. Shamika, you want to talk about that? She said that was her weakness, but now she's making it a skill set. Yes, um... Following up with people was definitely one of my weaknesses. Um, but I would say with me um, doing exactly what you just said, having those people names already lined up or who I'm going to follow with, follow up with. And a po um, I don't know if a lot of people do gro group postings, but I have a lot of group postings that like got uh, hundreds of comments who I may have forgot about. So now I'm just going through those groups and, and checking them off as I go along, deleting people, adding people, PS3 and or whatever. So I had to really do that following up um, to make it um, at least follow up with certain amount of people as my DMO. So now I'm becoming much better at following up. And now it's becoming my skill set. So, excellent. yep. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Anybody else want to speak on that? All right, number four. Oh, Lanise. I was just going to comment and say that um, that part is really important to have the names already written down because 
you can't maximize your time and you waste a lot of time trying to figure out what you're supposed to do once your work time, once it's that time is, you know, say if you do two to three and then now two o'clock is here and I don't know who I'm supposed to be talking to. And then I get distracted looking for them. So it's important to just have that list ready to go um, before the time comes to do the work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Number four, meetings and trainings. And these are non-negotiable meetings and trainings, right? You already know Wednesday, 7 p.m. is basic training. That should be on your calendar and there should be nothing that you have scheduled going on during that time, period. Period. Tuesday's 10 o'clock meeting with Mr. Moore should be on your calendar and nothing gets scheduled during that time, period. IMV, y'all already know the things that you're supposed to be plugged into. At a minimum, it, at a minimum it's the corporate stuff. The, in, the IMV in the mornings at 8 a.m. Eastern time, basic training, in the international locker room with Mr. Bradley. And our team Zoom with Mr. Moore. Minimum, those four things, minimum. Everything else is an extra, bonus. Getting on coffee break, that's an extra. You can be successful in this business without getting on my coffee break. That's something that I offer, right? Right now, Mr. Scott is doing a reading room and a coaching thing, right? It's great if you can plug into that, but guess what? If you don't, you can still be successful as long as you're plugging into the corporate stuff. But Mr. Bradley is putting out everything that you need to be successful in this business. And you can't expect to grow in your business if you're not plugged into the source of information. Shamika? I got a crying baby over here, but... <laughs> I would like to disagree with you on the virtual coffee break. I feel like maybe it's just for me, but if I was not, if I did not have virtual coffee break, like even if I still have the team meetings and the corporate things, I feel like I still have to be on virtual coffee break because it's kind of like the bulk of where I get my knowledge from and Aww. how it's developing my mindset. So I need to be on virtual coffee break in order for me to succeed in this business period. So I don't know I about anybody else. But me. I agree. I, I, I agree. I way. agree totally. I feel the same exact way. Wow. Wow. Thank y'all. I'm honored. That, yeah, don't make me cry. Cause I just put these contacts in and you know, if you cry with contacts, you got to throw them away. Don't make me cry. But I appreciate that. And, and you know what? To your point, to your point, I will say this. Sometimes you have to go outside of the norm to get what you need for your business and you got to be willing to do that. So what I'm hearing from all of you is, yeah, okay, Tanisha, we're plugged into all of that stuff, but you're giving us something that they're not giving us. And that's the part that I'm needing. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But yeah, you have to go where you need to go. There are people who, you know, their upline directors are not giving them what they need and they feel like they need to go other places to get it. Well, guess what? You are the CEO of your business. And if your business fails, it is directly because of you, not because of what your upline did or did not do, because you all have access to so many sources and resources of information all over, including Google and YouTube. So take advantage of that, okay? If you're not getting something, go find it. Hunt it down, because this is the jungle. Right, Cassandra? And if you don't hunt, you don't eat. All right, so the meetings and trainings. These things are non-negotiable and should be on your calendar. Big events. Another non-negotiable. So our next big event is the training, right, on the 18th. So get registered, tickets, it's sold out now. But that's something that, you know, people should be registered for and planning to attend. February 26th. And then you have Vegas. 
Vegas is still open for registration. To be, that is the director summit in Vegas. It's a $500 registration. It's at the Venetian. So you're at a five-star hotel and you're going to be around directors, people who have minimum teams of 100 people. You're going to be around six and seven figure income earners. There's going to be training that's tailored to whatever level you are in your business. That is an investment that you should be making in your business. And it should be a priority. Someone asks you what you want for Christmas? Cash so I can get to Vegas. Question. Yes. Um, is, do you still have to... Um be at Goal Builder by that nope. time or is it open nope. to everyone now? It's open to everyone. Okay. It's open to everyone. Tyrese? I had two questions, but I'm not sure if I asked this one before, but you mentioned the training. When um when I purchased my ticket for the training, I didn't know how that was going. I just knew to get my ticket, but I purchased two. Mm -hmm. And Good. I see that it says non, um, you can't transfer them or like, am I just stuck with two tickets? I guess that's where I'm going. When you, so are you going and you're, and you're saying now you have this extra ticket? Yeah. So what happens is when you go there, let's say for example, uh, Ebony wanted to go and she doesn't have a ticket. Yeah, and you, I do. You do I do. Go. Okay. Yeah. So y'all work that out. Uh, Tyrese, and when you go there, they're going to give you a wrist. They're going to give both of the wristbands to you. They can't give it to anybody else. So Ebony can't go there and collect the wristband. You, you meet Ebony there, you collect both of the wristbands, and then you give her her wristband to go in. Okay, perfect. I'll put my number in the chat, Ebony. I'm not sure if I have your number right. There you go. See, y'all work that out. And my other question real quick was back about when you said the meetings and the training and the four, at least the four corporate that we should be plugged into. I don't know if I'm missing something, but I thought I was connected to one from Mr. Scott on Saturdays. Does anybody go to that? On Saturdays with Mr. Scott? So Mr. Scott has right now his coaching call that he does Monday through Friday. It's a 20 minute coaching call. So he does that Monday through Friday. And then he has the early morning workout. That's his reading room. And that's at 6 a.m. Uh, the only other thing that he has that I'm aware of is his meet and greet that he does every first and third Monday. So if you have not met him, you can get on the meet and greet that he does. And okay. then Maybe uh, first Sunday, every first Sunday is the Legacy Group um, Team Zoom. I think I have that. But I, Coffee and Conversations was the name of the flyer. I saw. Well, yeah, he, yeah. Had he had that at one point, um, but I don't think it was something that's consistent. I just think he gave it on that one Saturday. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. My alerts still go off, but every time I go in there, I don't see anybody. <laughs> and the hitting the ad, so. Yeah. Okay. So you can remove you. that one. And if, you know, if he does it again, he'll, he'll post the flyer for it. It's something that he'll do from time to time. I don't, some of these things, I don't know where to find them. Like I follow as many as I can. Well, with, are you in, make that? sure you're, well, you want to make sure you're in the team group. So you should be, everybody should be in team Lux platinum group. That's my group. Uh -huh. And then Mr. Scott's group is called the legacy group on Facebook. So make sure you're in the legacy group on Facebook. And then Mr. Moore's team group is. Did you say? Is that Planet Proud? No, the Legacy Group. So Mr. Scott's group is the Legacy Group on Facebook. That's Mr. Scott's group. And then Mr. Moore's group is Team Planet Proud. So those are the three groups you should be in. 
Now your director may have a group or something that you're in as well. But for me, Mr. Scott and Mr. Moore, it's Team Lux Platinum. It's the Legacy Group on Facebook and it's Team Planet Proud. So if you're in those groups, then you'll be plugged into all of the meetings and stuff um, we post in there, what meetings and stuff we're doing, trainings and things as well. And Mr. Moore often goes live in his group talking about different things. So you want to make sure that if you're not that person who's on, you know, on your Facebook all day long, whatever, you want to make sure you, you check it at least a couple of times a day to make sure you're not missing any information that's being shared. All right. And if you're not in any of those groups, reach out to your upline, uh, gold builder or director to make sure that they invite you to join those groups. All right. So the big events. Okay, so those are the things you want to schedule. Any question about the things you should be scheduling? Or any comments or feedback? All right, so let's talk about the things now that you should be tracking. And these are things that I track on my monthly at a glance, right? So I can see the whole month of December, there are certain things that I'm tracking. Number one, your weekly income, your weekly. You should be tracking your weekly income. So yesterday was Sunday. So that was the end of however much you made for that week that you get paid on Friday. So like on my calendar for Sunday, I put whatever my weekly income was. How much did I make last week? Now, why is that important? Anybody wanna, wanna take a stab at why you should be tracking your weekly income? I guess to see how much um, you're actually making and um, also, It'll help you increase um, what you're making because you can actually see it visually, mm -hmm. um, what you have. Good, good. Lenise? I think, well, first I wanted to say that is, I think that's a really awesome idea to track because when you set a goal, you want to see if you're getting towards your goal. So if you know per month, you need a certain amount of money, that was your goal. If I see this week, I earned this amount and it's not quite up to what I need to be. I know what I need to do next week. Or I know what worked well and what I need to do better. Exactly. 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 You got, remember, we set SMART goals. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So if you're not tracking your weekly income, then how do you know you're even hitting your goal or how close you are to hitting your goal? And like Lenise says, if, if, the amount, if the amount is not what it should be, then you can look at your activity and say, okay, I need to increase. You know, maybe you only reached out to 10 people last week and you're like, I ain't hit my goal. I need to increase that to 15 or 20. Or maybe you didn't follow up with enough people. Or really what it comes down to, even, even beyond that, is how many three-way calls? How many three-way calls? Because that's where it's going to close people. So, you, And not only that, when you start to see zero, zero, $10, $20, you're like, I got to get my butt moving in gear. I'm tired of putting zero down as my weekly income. And hold yourself accountable. Don't be okay with a goose egg. That's what my teacher used to call it, a goose egg. Big old zero. That should be unacceptable to you to have zero weekly income. Unacceptable especially for those of you who are on coffee break every day with me. Because you know what to do. It just comes down to, are you doing it? 
And are you doing enough of it consistently? So tracking your weekly income. And just an FYI, if you are a gold builder, gold builder, your weekly income, your goal should be about $100 a week as a gold builder. All right. Another thing you should be tracking, your numbers. And these are things that you could be tracking on your month at a glance. What are your numbers today? Right? If you're shooting for director, what are your one star numbers? Are you at 20? Are you at 50? Are you at 60? Where are your numbers? Because you want to be able to look at where you were last month compared to where you were this month. Are those numbers moving? How close are you to your next goal? Because you don't want that number to stay the same either. But if you're looking at it every day like, man, I'm still at 11. I've been at 11 all month. When you see it, you're going to be com convicted over that. And it's going to make you reevaluate what you're doing or what you're not doing. So you know how, how the leadership always says you should ask your coach, what should you do more of? What should you stop doing? You know, that sort of thing. Well, if you're tracking your numbers, you already know the answer to that question. You don't need someone to tell you. But not only should you track your numbers, you wanna also be tracking your downlines numbers. And I'm not saying everybody, but the people who are your core or the people that you have identified that is really running with you, the people that you're spending your time with, you want to track their numbers. Right, Ebony came for her mentor weekend with me. So guess what? I'm tracking her numbers now. Every day, I look and see where she's at. Because now, now I know what I need to do. And if I see that that number's not moving, I gotta spend some more time with her. Because she invested the time to come with me for the mentor weekend. So I gotta stay on top of that. Right, Lanise is coming this weekend. So she's now on the list, tracking her numbers too, right? Because I need to know that the investment of the time that I put into the people who've raised their hand and said, I want to win, I need I need to see the numbers moving. We got, we got to call some plays and get this thing going. But it helps me to stay on track because I don't want the two of them to fall through the crack because I'm also doing a whole bunch of other stuff, right? I'm still doing my three-way calls, three-way calls for everybody. I'm still prospecting. I'm still doing my own follow-ups. I'm still doing weekly private business receptions. I'm still, you know, going to the uh, weekly meetings in Orlando and Tampa and Fort Lauderdale. So I have to have on my calendar who I'm tracking so that they don't fall through the cracks, that I keep them moving as well. So you have to identify on your team, who are you helping? And it's not everybody. So I don't want anybody getting stuck in the management trap. This is why I tell everybody, have a online calendar. That's another part of this calendar organization that nobody's going to tell you. I'm telling you, if you do not have an online calendar, get one set up. And you make sure your team has your online calendar. You say, hey, if you need me for a three-way call, book it on my online calendar. Hey, you need some one-on-one -on -one coaching for me, book it on my calendar. You have a question, book it on my calendar. And it's the people who get on your calendar, that's who you spend the time with. They're the ones that are raising their hand saying, 
I really want this. I really want to win in my business. If they don't get on your calendar, don't worry about them. Anybody want to speak on that? Yeah, I will, Tanisha. Um, I, I appreciate you, you know, telling us about the online calendar and emphasizing it um, because it does keep you out of the management, management trap. And I found myself uh, in that, you know, trying to just keep abreast of what's going on with my team members. But like you said, if they're not raising their hand, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to spend my time uh, because I'm moving. I'm moving now. I'm a different person. I'm a different mindset on where I'm trying to go. And I'm going to go with the ones who want to go with me. Mm -hmm. uh, but that calendar, yeah, it, that's, that's, that's the best thing that could ever happen to me. Good. And I've been knowing about the calendar for a while, but just never did it because I'm like, I don't need that, mm -hmm. but I do. <laughs> I really do. And I appreciate that. You're welcome. Ebony? Um, you told us about the online calendar a while ago, and um, I went on, I think I may have started, I always start with Google first, and I uh, tried to do the online calendar, and I did not know all of the things that it entailed. Uh, I just started an online calendar, but then, you know, I'm not getting anything on the calendar because I did not set it up correctly. And I finally opened my mouth and said, I need help because I am in this business with everybody else. I'm not in it by myself. So I did do thank you for your help with getting it set up. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Shamika? Um, I was going to say to the calendar, um, it, it helps me and it helps other people with people just reaching out to you at all kinds of nights and times and days. Because I have had that happen where people just text you at 12 o'clock in the morning. Hey, I have this question. No, you don't because it's not on my calendar. So <laughs> I had to uh, reinvent my calendar too because I don't know what I did the first time. It was all jacked up. So I had to go do YouTube University and I figured it out. And finally, I got my calendar. But it, it gives that that respect and that time is like, okay, I have this from eight to five. Now after five, don't contact me, schedule some more time on that calendar. So it, it, it sets boundaries. That's yeah. what I was looking for. Sets those boundaries. So get those calendars. Absolutely. And if yeah, you I, I need to go to YouTube university because I set up my online calendar and I, I don't know. I don't think I did it correctly either. So I'm going to go back. Yeah, go it. back, test it out, make sure it works. Don't be putting something out there that you haven't clicked on yourself and schedule a test appointment to make sure it shows on your on your phone and stuff like that. You know, get get with one of your business partners that has one set up. So, you know, you can say, okay, how did you set yours up? But you got to take the initiative to make sure that your business is working for you. Right. And it's so important. And again, if you don't respect your time, don't expect your team to respect your time. You got to have business hours. You have to have business hours or else you won't be able to get anything done. You'll be spending most of your day responding to text messages. And that is not a good use of your time. Everything should be scheduled. Everything. Date night with your spouse scheduled. Time with your children, scheduled. I get it, your kids are your everything or whatever, scheduled. Because they will eat up all your time too. And you can't let your why become your why not. You can't say you're building this business because you want to leave a legacy for your children and make sure they're straight or whatever. But then you do not set the time aside to build the business because you're using them as the excuse. Well, my kid needed this, my kid needed that. Nope, you got to schedule time, mom. Dad, kid time got to be scheduled. Grandma. Grandma. <laughs> it has to be scheduled or else you'll never get anything done. Now you got a newborn. Yeah, it's hard to make a schedule for a newborn, right? But these older kids, schedules. So tracking your downlines numbers, again, the people that you're working with, 
Um, you want to schedule that. Yep, Tyree said it's tough for single parents. I get it. Yeah, it is tough. But so is not having any money. So guess what we do is, as not just as single parents, guess what we always have to do as women? Figure it out. We don't, we don't get to just, oh, crawl in a ball and, and put the covers over our head and, and hope for a better tomorrow as women, as mothers. We don't get that. Unfortunately, a lot of dads get to do that. They get to check out. Single moms, we don't get to check out. If we check out, we go hungry. Our kids go hungry. We don't get that. We got to fight through it. We just got to make it happen. Failure is not an option when you are a single parent. Man or woman. Well, guess what? As a CEO, I need you to adopt that same mindset. Failure is not an option. So figure it out. Raise your hand and ask for help. I have one young lady, um, you know, she leaned on her family and was like, I need you to take the, can you take the kids, you know, a certain day for X amount of hours so that she could work her business. De develop relationships. You should have friends that you can say, can you, Tuesday nights, can you take little Jimmy? For a couple of hours so I can really focus on my business. Or just come over. You ain't gotta, I ain't gotta drop them off. But just come over so you can, you know, keep them occupied. Because I really need to put some time in. This is why you have to build relationships with people. So that you can lean on them. So that they can support you. They might not be in your business. But they can still support you while you're working your business. Figure it out. And if you move to a new place and you're like, well, I don't know anybody, then get out the house and meet some people. Develop those relationships. But what you can't do is make excuses. Figure it out. Write that down. Figure it out. Instead of saying, I can't, say, how can I? How can I make it happen? Natisha, you said that just hit you. Can you talk about that? Oh, yeah, because um, right now, not having a job, and I'm not a single parent, but um, I like to have my own money. And it's hard when you don't, you know, you're not in place to do something. But I've always been the one who had to figure it out. So it's like, what are you doing? Like, you've been always getting stuff together. You know, what what's happening now that you don't have it together in your business? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, yes, it, it, it hits because it's like, what are you doing? Right. Right. And you got to hold yourself accountable. You are the CEO of your business. So if your business is not turning a profit, whose fault is that? And what are you going to do about it? There's literally, I, I feel like there's nothing else to give y'all at this point. Like, I feel like I've, I've given everything. Be t you know, and teletravel has given you everything to put you in a position to win and build a successful travel agency. I feel like Mr. Bradley has put everything in place and given you everything you've needed to build a successful marketing business, right? Mr. Moore, Mr. Scott, right? The other leaders. There's nothing new. There's really nothing new. There's nothing left to give. If you have not mastered the PS3, that's it. If you're not peaking interest, showing the plan, and getting your upline leader on a three-way call for that third-party validation, there's nothing else. There's nothing else. All the little 
nuggets we drop here and there is usually kind of like mindset and processes. You know, well, here's a process for this to make things easier for you. But at the core of everything to be successful, to leave that legacy for your children, to not have to work for somebody unless you want to, it comes down to how many people are you peaking? How many people are you showing a plan to? And how many three-way calls are you getting a day? And I want all of you to ask yourself, when was the last time you got your leader or a senior business partner on a three-way call? Because that is the true measurement of whether or not you're working your business. Or let's, let's just look at last week. How many three-way calls did you complete last week? And this is very important, especially for those of you who identify as being green. You know, the greens, they, they, they always getting ready to get ready. They got to create a spreadsheet for this. They got a chart for that. They got the green, yellow, and blue highlighters. They got post-it notes and stick. The green people, they're probably the most difficult people to get going in the business. So if you are green, the main thing you got to ask yourself to get yourself out of staying in that green zone is how many three-way calls did you complete last week? How many? And guess what? You probably got a spreadsheet to track it, so you should know. That's how greens work. Who wants to speak on this? I was out of commission, but um, yesterday Shamika did a bunch of three-way calls for me. Um, and I have some prospects that are supposed to be signing up this week. So Excellent. I've been very productive. Excellent. Excellent. And, and Tanya had surgery. Made no excuses. She's been working her business through her recovery. Three-way calls and all of that. That, that's the mindset you have to have. Lanice and then Shamika. I, I'm, I'm, I had two things I wanted to say. Um, one was, because I, I stepped out, so I didn't hear everything, but um, when it comes to, you mentioned something about like, you got to... Uh, um, build relationships so that maybe if you need assistance, you have it. And I was thinking that that is what Coffee Break has enabled me to do is to build relationships with others in the business. And not that, um, you know, I need support is like in childcare, but I was thinking from that from that angle, when you build relationships and you have people in your area, you can kind of work together with someone who has a kid. You know, you can kind of say, today we're going to get together, take the kids to the park and work, or I got you today, you got me tomorrow. Um, because Shamika don't live that close to me, but I was okay with driving to her because we've developed a relationship where a two hour drive was nothing for me right. to go to work with her. And we were only together for a couple of hours, <laughs> but it was okay. So when we you develop those relationships, you can um, leverage those relationships to help each other um, when you need that kind of help. So that's what I thought about. I don't know everything y'all mentioned, but that's what I thought about when I heard you mention that. Yes. And, and then um, I was thinking because I'm primarily green, my struggle is, but I'm not an organized green. <laughs> so, so my struggle is um, is getting to the three way. I can do the peak. I can do the show the plan. I'm missing that last little piece, and I'm learning the the, the piece I was missing was actually scheduling you know, connect the meeting from the meeting. Right. So I get, I get, so that's the part that I'm learning to do because although I, I identify as primarily green, I'm learning that maybe I'm not all the way green <laughs> because I'm doing the things. I don't have, a, I don't need to get ready too long. It's right. just that for me, it was, um, it's developing a skill set. So even though, yes, we've been given everything, it takes time, some time to get that skill set together with you, um, where it all connects and works out. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why when you take a note on something, you have to execute on it that day, test it out that day. 
right? We talked about Bam Fam, book a meeting from a meeting. Immediately that day, you're like, okay, let me book a meeting from a meeting. Let me get on the phone with someone. Let me, you know, pique their interest. And let me make sure I schedule the next meeting with them before we hang up. If you practice what you learn that day, then now you just develop the new skill. And now all you have to do is keep doing it. And then it becomes second nature. Shamika? So I had three things. Um, one thing that helped me out with the three-way calls is intro calls. So I started doing intro calls where I introduced myself. They introduced themselves. Um, they tell me why they were even interested in the opportunity. I then invite them to some information. And then I booked, I scheduled a three-way call. So them, them intro calls definitely help me out when it comes to, um, you know, booking the meeting from a meeting, inviting, uh, peaking interest, building rapport all in one. So I would say maybe try to implement those um, intro calls. And I even tested it out on Dvoris. So I just called Dvoris to say, sis, let me, let me just check this out on you. Tell me how I did or whatever, you know, to kind of get those butterflies out your stomach. And then you can be like, okay, well, let me call this prospect and do what I just did to Dvoris. So sometimes you might have to do that too. Um, another thing was um, with, with my son, cause I have a two years, I have a two years old son. I do have a significant other, his father, who's with me, but he works. So I really do have to maximize my time. And being a single parent, because I'm not married, um, being a single parent is so easy to, like, Tariq is sleek right now. It's so easy for me to cut the TV on or get on the phone or go outside and do whatever when I really need to be maximizing that time while he sleeps. So now I can be, okay, he sleep. Let me get let me do the hardest thing first. Let me call 30 people real quick. And if they answer, oh, well, if they don't, oh, well. Right. So, and then another thing was leveraging. Um, I, I had to expand on that. I actually did a team training on leveraging. This business is absolutely amazing and huge on leveraging. So um, I even told that to one of Tanya's prospects, you know, that, okay, she edified me and brought me to, you know, introduced me to you but then you don't hear Tanya talking anymore this is what the business is all about we leverage each other and I was just letting them know like even though um you know we leverage each other in business but we do it in life too <laughs> Tanya has helped me out in life in real life right. so um I would say do that leveraging too it's 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 um it's an amazing thing even with showing the plan um leveraging you're leveraging videos you're leveraging webinars where you are not doing all the talking and you're not taking up all your, of your time. Right. So leveraging, it helps you maximize your time too. So it could be so easy when Tariq or the baby is asleep, you know, yep. to not do nothing, but you gotta, you gotta push those fears aside and just push through and keep, you know, keep. Excellent. Excellent. And, and yeah, when it comes to calendar organization, leverage. So when you get to those people that you're prospecting and they say, I don't have time, leverage. That's the conversation. That's how you respond to someone who says, I don't have a lot of time. You say, it doesn't require a lot of times. It just re requires you to leverage, right? Build those relationships and then you can leverage. Closing comments for anyone. Has this been helpful? Who, who now knows what direction they need to take with their calendar? Who, who wants this to share some takeaways? Yes, this has absolutely been helpful. And um, what I will say is um, like um, Lanice and, Sh and Shamika were talking about with uh, the building rapport and leveraging. Um, since on coffee break, I've been having that um, building rapport with my business partners. And so in our group, um, we actually been working together and Shamika does great three-way calls for us um so I have actually got two three-way calls done last week with her um and I need to get that up but um she's phenomenal and I I appreciate all of you guys awesome awesome and I will be adding Shamika to the three-way call list this week so thank you Shamika for saying hey coach add me to the list I'm ready to go I think that's phenomenal Lanice, you have a takeaway or a comment? It was, um, I didn't, 
<laughs> but I appreciate everything. And um, thank you so much for going over um, the tracking part of the calendar because I don't want to keep hit putting a zero nowhere on the calendar. So that um, really was like an eye opener for me because when you tracking it like that, it's it will um, push you to more activity. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Who else? What was your takeaway from today's training on calendar organization? I got, I got one uh, thing I wanted to say too that I forgot about. Uh, we're tracking your numbers. So what I, um, what I've been doing lately is tracking the numbers on how many people I invite versus how many people show up versus how many people sign up versus how many people I really took through the whole PS3. So I would say that that's a good thing to have. So you can know, okay, I invited 20 people, maybe five is going to show up out of those five. Maybe I might get one that signed up. So I would say track your numbers like that too. It's helped me out tremendously. Absolutely. Cause then you want to know what your closing percentage is. Ebony. Um, one thing about the three-way call. Um, I actually thought I had a three-way call um, this weekend, um, and she kept uh, changing the time, or if I call her, she wasn't answering the phone. And one thing that I realized I did not do was, um, after showing her the videos, was asking her on a scale of one to 10, where was she? Um, that would have let me know whether she was even ready for a three-way call, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or if I needed to send her more information like another video or or send her to a uh, Facebook uh, uh, presentation. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I was a little disappointed, but I moved so fast beyond that disappointment and just kept on calling people that mm -hmm. I just was like, okay, if she wants it, she'll call me. Um, right now, I can't focus on her. I need to move on to the next person. And then with that next person, make sure I ask that question on a scale of one to 10, where do you see yourself with this business? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. You got to go through the numbers. You got to go through the numbers. And, and let me say this in closing, when it comes to the three-way call, you only want to get your expert on the phone with people that are serious about the business. They got to be seriously considering partnering with you. If they're like, eh, you know, it seems okay. Please don't waste our time on a three-way call. We only want to talk to people that are serious, seriously considering partnering with you in the business so that we can get their, call, their questions answered and they can make an informed decision. You do not want to waste your expert's time on someone who seems like they're not really excited or interested. You know, they just kind of doing you a favor. We don't want to talk to those people because we're not there to convince them. We're not there to show them the vision. They should already have the vision. And that's why they're on the phone with us so that we can maybe connect the dots for them and show them exactly, yes, you can do this. Yes, this can help you meet that goal. You're, you're on the right track with your thought process about partnering with Nora, right? So again, you want to make sure, you know, if you pique someone's interest, you send them the two videos. Hey, after watching these two videos, is this something you're interested in learning more about? Absolutely. Yeah, this seems great. Awesome. When are you available for a call so we can discuss? And then you book the three-way call and then you send them the big picture video and tell them to watch it and write down their questions and you'll answer it on the call. Ebony? Ebony? Real quick, I accidentally sent um, the big picture video instead of the the other two videos. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? I just did it once, but I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, depending on who your prospect is could determine how they react to it. But at, at the end of the day, Ebony, you're looking for hungry people and you cannot say the wrong thing to the right person. So after they watch the big picture video, it's, hey, after watching this video, is this something that you're interested in learning more about? It's a yes or a no. And if it's a yes, it's great. When are you available for a call so I can get all your questions answered and you can decide? So, you know, it's fine. Just like on the peak interest business cards we created, right? We got videos, the, the scan is going to the big picture video. So that's fine. 
And and let me say this. I kind of got a confirmation uh, from Mr. Bradley at Success School. He he reached out. He said on the stage. He said he looked at Natalie Graham and he said, "You and I are probably the worst with follow ups." And that was a confirmation for me. I don't, I don't, I don't do a whole lot of follow-ups, but I'm not in the same place you are. Remember, this was seven figure success school. So I don't want y'all say, oh, I don't have to do follow-ups. No. When I was where you were, I was following up my butt, like <laughs> constantly, right? But at that level, at that level, when you get to a certain level in this business, you're not following up because you're more intentional about who you're going after. You're hunting people, right? And you want the hungry people. And hungry people, you don't have to follow up with them. They'll jump in your inbox. So that's what you're building up to. But at this point where all of you are, you have got to follow up because you have to develop that skill set of identifying who's the hungry people. But as you grow, you're going to see your social media community is going to change to more quality people, more sharp, more ambitious, more professional people. And at that point, they're going to be jumping in your inbox. You're going to be attracting them. So right now, this is this, the stage where you're developing that skill set, right? You're personally developing. So you're starting to attract better people, but you have to do this follow up to, to identify who are those people out of your current group. But that's going to shift the longer you're in this business and you're more consistent. All right. So that concludes Coffee Break. Thank you for the extra six minutes. Don't forget tonight at 7 p.m. on the Planet Marketing Facebook page is the virtual presentation. So go ahead and get start inviting. Get people there. All right. And I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye.